Hi there, it's Liam here from Rates in the Races. So in this video we're going to have a look at the um, National Hunter Horses to Follow blog that I posted, how they've done so far, and what I'm thinking of the um, plans by the trainers. Uh, I'll give you a little heads up, not impressed. Um, first of all, before we start, um, please do subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, the more subscribers we have, the more we know that you want these types of videos, you want these videos. We've had people messaging the last few days asking for the um, analysis videos, the handicap analysis, um, the eye catches from the weekend for the National Hunt. Currently in Australia at the moment, it's very difficult to do, but I will be doing it as soon as I am back. I am back in the UK on the 15th of November, so expect to see some videos appearing around then, 16, 17, 18, 19th of November, and then throughout the rest of the National Hunt season. Um, but do subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um, you can do that by clicking the subscribe button, or uh, I think there's even a link in the description below. So anyway, let's talk about our horses to follow and how they've gotten so far. So the first one we'll talk about is Pembroke because uh, he's at the top of our list here. I really liked him for the Coral Cup. Dan Skelton sent him chasing. Dan Skelton has run him over two mile. He's been beaten and he's been beaten. Okay, I napped him here. But I was hoping that Dan Skelton was right and I was wrong. I don't think I was. And I don't think he was. I think I'm right, and I think he's wrong. I mean, he's not winning a novice handicap chase. He didn't win a novice chase. Okay, he was second over two and a half in a grade two. And it was a good figure by the winner, uh, previously by the winner. So it's not that it was a poor grade two. Dan Skelton just is convinced he has a loads of pace, and he wants to make him into something a bit unusual. No idea what that means, considering he says, I'd like to think he'll be running in graded races. So you think you'll be running him in graded races? That's not unusual. Um, he was just outstayed at Chatham over two and a half miles. Yeah, he was, by a horse that stays three mile. Put him back over hurdles, go for um, the Coral Cup. I'm hoping that Dan Skelton's been very clever. He knows he's got a really well handicapped horse, and he's going to step him up and trip, and then go and win a nice race with him. Um, but at the moment, I'm not impressed with Dan Skelton's uh, planning or placement of Pembroke. Second horse that's actually in my list uh, is Favori de Champdou, who's had one run. He went over fences and he ran in a beginner's chase uh, and he was beaten over two miles six. Now he went off five to two that day. There was a four to six favourite, one of Noel Mead's horses. and. The fact he's gone a four to six, uh, he's gone a five to two, second favourite in a beginner's chase. If you put all of the good beginners, the two mile five, two mile six, two mile seven, three mile beginner chases in a race, Favre de Champdou is going to go off seven, eight, nine, you know, seventh, eighth, ninth in the betting, demonstrating he's not a grade one chaser. So why have we sent him chasing? What's the plan? Do you think he wants further? I think he's fine over three mile. He just needs handicaps. Now, there's no reason to have run up the ha run up to fences just yet. I mean, he looked so well handicapped over her hurdles. Rated 137 um, in Ireland. That would have been fine. If he turned up to Cheltenham rated 145, he could have got in the Potemps final. And I think he would have been a graded horse, not a grade one, but a grade two, grade three horse in a handicap over a trip that suits. Last year, he ended up obviously running in the uh, Albert Bartlett because that was the trip. But he demonstrated he wasn't a grade one horse. Um, I mean, if he wants to go, you know, work his way up, he could have done the same as he did with Sider Burley, who's won, did he win um, two attempts finals, I think, before moving into grade one company. That's what they should have done with Favre de Champ do. I don't know what, their, what the long-term target is with him. Um, but yeah, he's already been beaten, and it kind of feels like he's going to end the season probably running a grade one somewhere at Cheltenham, Aintree, Punchestown, finishing fifth and sixth, and being like, yeah, we had a good season with him. Okay. The next one, similar story. Mai Tai went over fences last season for his campaign. Uh, it was the weirdest campaign over hurdles last season. Three mile, two mile, two and a half. You don't have a clue what your horse needs. He wants two to two and a half. And they thought, let's go chasing instead. And they got beat over two and a half mile by a complete unknown. Again, he's going to end the season coming to Aintree probably. I don't think he'll run at Cheltenham. Um, probably at Aintree, finished fifth or sixth at Aintree and then being like, yeah, he's not quite up to standard. Could have, could have kept him over hurdles, targeted the big handicaps, targeted the Greatwood hurdle, targeted the um, 
Coral Cup or Martin Pipe again. You know, give him a, a proper plan. Know his trip, two miles to two and a half miles. Stop messing about with all the different trips. Give him a proper campaign. And there's still more to come from my time. But what they're doing now is probably going to waste another season over fences where they find out that he's not grade one company, having run in all the graded races up to uh, Cheltenham. And then, you know, finding there isn't a two and a half mile handicap chase, novice handicap chase at Cheltenham, they would have to run in the open handicap, which is a lot harder. So another one should stay over hurdles. Moving on, uh, we've got Monbeg Genius. Now Monbeg Genius is actually in a couple of races this weekend. He's in the Sodexo Live Gold Cup, and he's also in a race at Carlisle. That one, not that one, but we'll find it. Here it is. Let's put this back. Uh, where is he? Monbeg Genius. So he is in the Sodexo Live Handicap for 56 grand, or a 17 grand intermediate chase. Now, where he runs probably de determines what type of horse they think they have. In my opinion, if he runs here at Carlisle, they're targeting the bigger handicap at Newbury. I think it's called the Coral Gold Cup now. If they run at Ascot, I think they'll think they'll win this race and then end up in the graded races come the end of the season. The, you know, potentially even like the Gold Cup is where they could be looking. Um, yeah, so I think that's, this is how it works with Monbeginius, depending on where he runs, determines where they think he is. If he runs in this intermediate chase, I think he'll get beat. Um, but I think it'll be probably a nice prep race for Newbury. So we'll keep working through our horses. We've also had the Goffer come out. You know, the Goffer who I've said once, where is he? Two and a half mile, doesn't stay, wants the Paddy Power. Where's he come out? He has ran over three mile and been beaten. Drop him back to two and a half mile, please. I mean, the last time he ran over two and a half mile, two mile five, he won. And it was a good handicap. Look at the prize money for this handicap. It was worth... Come on. Because it's, it's going back quite a few days. This was back in February of 2023. He won 78 grand winning this race. Maybe that's where they're going to end up again this season. Um, but when he drops back in trip, he'll be a better horse. So keep an eye out for him still. It's not completely over with him. Marla Mission is also entered in this race at Carlisle, you'll see. Now, Marla Mission, for me, is a Welsh national horse, three mile five. So to be running in a race over two mile, just shy of two mile four, would be a clear um, suggestion that this is a prep race. It's a prep race for something. I'm hoping it's a national or Welsh national or something like that rather than the Coral Gold Cup, because I think there's a few there that could go to the Coral Gold Cup that I quite like. Um, so I'd rather not see him there. But I mean, he was going to run his best performance and win impressively in a three mile five race at Cheltenham. Um, and yeah, that just screamed Welsh National to me. So hopefully he might begin the prep race. It might be a bit early for a prep race for a, a National. Um, so that would be my concern if he did run on Sunday at Carlisle. We then move on to Bold Endeavour. Now, Bold Endeavour has got an entry in a Grade Two, um, and I actually I've actually recorded this video already, and it didn't save for some reason. Um, and in that video, I was suggesting that this was a poor race to run in because he could end up getting himself moved up the handicap for not even winning the race. You know, he could finish fourth or fifth sort of thing and, and go up the handicap. However, I'm just hoping that. There's enough horses in this that get away from him. Time Hill, Dashel Drasher, Garlor, Hoysenor, and um, potentially go away from him if they do all run. And he doesn't move in the handicap, but he ends up having a nice prep run. So this is on Saturday the 4th of November. The race I really like him for is on the 25th of November. So that'd be 21 days, which isn't a bad uh, layoff at all. Three weeks would be kind of perfect. The bet for exchange stays handicap hurdle. If you notice, I actually put it here. Uh, Bold Endeavour. I've suggested this race here just to see if they can win a feature handicap with him and whether he truly stays three. If he does, I think they'll go over fences afterwards. No point sticking to hurdles. The only concern, as I've mentioned, is this race here. If he gets too close to some of those in front, he could go up five, six, seven pounds and kind of ruin his handicap mark, which is why I hate horses running in these types of races when they look so well handicapped. Um, you so often see it. Obviously, we had it on the flat this year with the likes of 
Pink Crystal and Funny Story look beautifully handicapped, kept running in listed races. They both have actually won listed races, but they were both going up in the handicap when they could have won a feature handicap first, probably more prize money, and then gone into the listed races and picked up those. Um, so that's something I, I really don't like. The next horse, now this one isn't running at the weekend, but he should have been. Before midnight, I really think horses remember their last experience at, tra at, at tracks. And before midnight, his last experience at Cheltenham, before his run at the weekend, was pulling up in the Johnny Henderson Grand Annual in che at Cheltenham in March, earlier this year. Um, when held up, never got involved. He, he did exactly the same on, on Saturday or last week. Um, held up, never got involved. I napped him, hoping that Fergal O'Brien was right. And I was wrong. But again, I think I'm right. And he was wrong. Why did he not come back for this race or for the race on Saturday, which is actually the race before this one? There's two different versions of this two-mile handicap at uh, Ascot in November and December. Boot Hill won this race as top rated. Boot Hill is also in this race at the weekend and Boot Hill is 5-1 to one favourite. If Ben Sutton, who's been riding before midnight, took the ride again, he would have had a £27 pull with the favourite of the race from this year having finished just eight lengths behind him last year. I mean, that looked like a no-brainer to me. I um, just don't understand how how or why they think that the right race for him was at Cheltenham, where he disappointed. And I don't understand the way they're being ridden either. He's not a hold-up horse. He needs to go forward and, you know, at least be second or third. And they're running from the back and he's disappointing. So hopefully they can sort that out quickly and rather not waste his season. Maxim has done has won a race. Uh, walk away. I think he's in a race uh, coming up soon. Is he in the one of the nationals? Cork Grand National. He's seven to one second favourite of the Cork Grand National. Obviously, if he wins that race, it will certainly frank the form for Maxim, who I think is the Ultima horse. Uh, I've got him on here somewhere. Here he is, Maxim for the Ultima. So hopefully, that's looking like going the right way. He won a beginner's chase over three mile, beating two decent horses as well. Next one is Beauport, who is actually second favourite for the race at Ascot of the weekend, and I don't think he will win that. Um, or at least not on this stage with all the entries in it. Obviously, we'll see who, who's left in at the end of the season, at the end of the season, uh, at the end of the week. And, I mean, if Monbeau Genius turned up and Beauport turned up, I'd be very keen on Monbeau Genius to beat Beauport. Um, but there's a few others that certainly have big chances in the race. T-Clipper, Two for Gold, um, Mucho Mass, even do so if he bounced back to his best. So with that in mind, this might actually work out quite nicely. This is on Saturday, the 4th of November. Um, interestingly, he's also in that two and a half mile race at uh, this one here. Nope. Where's it gone? He's in this race here as well. Beauport, Marla Mission, Mont Virginia's. They could all turn up in that Carlisle race, which will be clear that they're all running in prep races. Um, if he did turn up on Saturday or Sunday in any of these two races, I don't think he would win. However, I do think that might put him spot on for this Sir Peter O'Sullivan Memorial Handicap Chase, which is the race that I've suggested he should target here. Um, that's in about three weeks' time. Last year it was in last year it was on the twenty sixth of November. So yeah, about three weeks' time. It's probably three weeks, three weekends' time. Um, and if he turned up there after running okay or you know, so-so at either Ascot or Carlisle, I'd be keen on that. So hopefully they're not doing the wrong thing with him. The next horse is Your Own Story, who uh, I thought should have been running in. You can see he was taken out of this race over three mile on heavy. He should have run in this race over three mile five on soft at Durham National, which is the race I suggested. If we have a look, Durham National, uh, I think he would have won that and gone up the handicap and ended up in better races. He does actually have an entry this weekend, um, so keep an eye on that. But I won't go into too much detail there because that's going to be for the Premium and Pro members, which I'm going to talk about in the next video with them shortly.